In this video, we are going to install and configure Copilot for SSMS. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. So, in a previous video, we installed SQL Server Management Studio 21. Now, we can install additional components or extensions into SSMS, and one of them is Copilot. So, Copilot is Microsoft's AI assistant that can answer questions about your database and environment and help with writing and correcting your code. So, first of all, we need to install Copilot in SSMS 21 or above. So, please check my previous videos for how to install SSMS 21 if you are using SSMS 20 or below. And SSMS 21 can still work with your existing SQL Server. You don't need SQL Server 2025 to use SSMS 21. First of all, I need to launch the Visual Studio installer. So this is a separate program. So it's not part of SSMS 21. So you'll find it in your start menu. So here you can see SQL Server Management Studio 21, and I'm going to click on Modify next to it. Now you can see we've got various workloads, one of which is the AI Assistant. And if I click on that, you'll see that it will install Copilot in SSMS. We can also get to this by going to Individual Components and checking Copilot in SSMS. So I'll click on Modify, and then the computer asks me, do I want to allow the app to make changes? So I'm going to say yes. And now you can see before it can start installing, I need to close SSMS first. So I'll do that and click retry. It's a very swift install. So I'll just let it install. And now you can see it has installed. So next, I will open up again SQL Server Management Studio 21 and log in to my database. So here you can see I'm now connected. Next, I need to connect Copilot to an Azure OpenAI endpoint. So I'll go to View and Copilot, and you can see we've also got a Copilot button here. So however you launch Copilot, it will ask you for three things, an Azure OpenAI endpoint, deployment, and depending on how you've got it configured, an API key. If you're using Microsoft Entra authentication, so you are authenticating into Azure, for example, then you don't need the Open AI key. So now let's deploy Azure Open AI. So I'm going to go to portal.azure.com. Now, if you don't already have a Microsoft Azure login, then you can get one for free you will need a work email address and you will get around 200 US dollars of free credit. Now, if you don't have a work email address or an Azure login, then I've got some videos on these topics as well. So now I'm in portal.azure.com and I'm going to type in OpenAI, one word. And you can see here, Azure OpenAI. So I'm going to click on Create. And then I select a subscription. So you might just have the one trial subscription. So just use that. And I'm going to create a new resource group. And the advantage of this is if I want to remove the Azure OpenAI resource, plus any other resources that depend on it, they'll all be grouped together in the one resource group. So I'll call this Azure OpenAI and click OK. Next, we need a region. So I'll choose a region that's close to you. You might also need a specific region for, for example, GDPR or other data regulations. So I'm going to choose UK South and then a name. So I'm going to call this Open Azure Open AI SSMS21. And you can see that's already been used. So I'll just add some numbers after it. And then a pricing tier. So we've got the standard S0 pricing tier. Now the price of OpenAI depends on the model that you are using. But for example, if you're using ChatGPT 4.1, for example, you can see that we've got prices 
ranging between two and eight dollars per million tokens. So we're looking at a prompt token price of somewhere between one and five cents for GPT-4. Now a thousand tokens is around 750 words and a typical SQL generation prompt and response could use several hundred tokens. So you're probably looking for around one cent to five cents for GPT-4. So let's go back to Azure OpenAI and we'll click on next. In the network, I'm going to use all networks. You might want to change this if you're using a virtual private network or VPN. Clicking next gives me the tags tab. I'm not going to do anything on that. And then clicking next takes me to the review and submit tab. And here I will click create. So this will just take a few seconds. And now you can see deployment is complete. So I'm going to click on go to resource. In the resource, I'm going to expand resource manager and select keys and endpoint. And this is where we can see the information that we need for SSMS. So we need the endpoint. So I'm going to click on this copy symbol and then paste it into the OpenAI endpoint. And I'll also need the open AI key. So I'm going to copy key one and paste key one. Now, the only thing I need left is the deployment. So I need to deploy an open AI model. So I'm going to go into overview and then click on explore Azure AI Foundry portal. So here I can deploy my model. So next, I'm going to go to deployments on the left hand side and then click on deploy model, deploy base model, and I'm going to select GPT 4O. Now, at the time of recording, GPT 4O chat completion is the only model supported at this stage. So I'm going to check that and go to confirm. Next, I can select the deployment type. So first of all, we've got the word standard. Standard is the name recommended for preview. Now, global standard offers the best performance. Data zone offers a balanced trade-off and standard optimizes for a specific region, but there may be additional latency. So I'm going to click on global standard. So now I'll click on deploy. And now you can see that this model is being deployed. Now you might also want to click on customize to customize any of these, including the capacity. You might want to set that at the maximum value available and then lower the cap later if you wish to do so. Now you can see that I've got an error, failed to deploy model GPT-4 or another operation is being performed. If you get this, then this is often automatically resolved in say one to five minutes. So just wait a few minutes and then click deploy again. So I've paused the video for a few minutes and then clicked on create again. And now you can see that the deployment is being created. So now it's been created. I'm just going to scroll down a little and you can see that in this sample code, we have got deployment equals and then speech marks and then the name of the deployment. So I'm going to copy the deployment name without the speech marks and then go back into SSMS and paste. And now I can click on launch Copilot. So now you can see that it has been launched. So now I can ask it questions. Now, these could be general questions about the database itself, the server, for example. So what version of SQL is this? So you can see it is, if I expand this pane a bit more, I'm currently using SSMS 21. But if I want to find out the version of the server instance, then here is some code. So if I click on new query and then click on insert, here you can see my code that has been created and I can run this and you can see that I'm using 
SQL Server 2025. So I can say, for example, list the databases on this instance. And again, we've got the code. So I will insert that code as well and run it. And here we can see the databases. So the advantage of this is it's not just answering my question for this specific point in time. It's giving me code that I can rerun whenever I want. Now let's ask some questions about a database specifically. So I'm going to go to the AdventureWorks 2014 database. This can be downloaded and installed from the internet. And we've got various tables. So I can say in the AdventureWorks 2014 database, what is the largest table? And again, we get some code. Or maybe I want to say, what columns store email addresses? And again, I get some code as well. Now, you can also ask it more general questions, like for instance, what is a database backup? Or you could be more specific, what's the difference between a full and log database and how do I create it? So you can see some of these questions are being answered in the answer to this one particular question. Now, at the time of recording, Copilot in SSMS doesn't have access to your query editor. So it can't read directly from the editor or copy something to it. However, it can assist with writing questions based on tables. For example, write a query to return all customers who ordered products in January of any year. And here we get some code. Now, by default, Copilot runs in a read-only mode, so it can't actually update data. However, you can change that by saying slash rw for read write or slash rwa for read write with approval so if i say slash rw may now write or update data now i don't necessarily want that so i'm going to highlight that copy and paste this again but get rid of the dash write and now you can see it has now gone back to read-only mode. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video where we installed Copilot in SSMS 21 and above. If you did, then please give it a like and why not subscribe and click that bell? That way you'll be notified of any new videos. What are you going to use Copilot in SSMS for? Please let me know in the comments to this video. And if you want to see how to install SQL Server 2025, there's a link on the end screen. Please click on it. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thanks for watching and keep learning.